Greetings friends, welcome to our channel Code Chef. If you want to learn competitive programming or you want to master data structures and algorithms, then this is the right place for you to be at. Every week we upload Code Chef contest video tutorials and videos on various important data structures and algorithms. If you are new to the channel, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. This video will be about introduction to greedy algorithms and there are no prerequisites for this video. Before learning about greedy algorithms, let us try to understand in what kind of problems is greedy algorithm used. Greedy algorithms are used in optimization problems. What is an optimization problem? An optimization problem is a problem in which you have to find the best solution from all the feasible solutions. In most of the problems that we are going to solve, the best would either mean something which gives us the minimum result or something which gives us the maximum result. In a problem where we have to minimize some result, we call that problem as a minimization problem. And if we have to maximize a particular result in a problem, we call it as a maximization problem. Consider a simple example in which we need to go from point A to point B. And we have four options. We can either walk or we can use a cycle or we can use a bike or we can use a car. What we have to do is choose an option such that we minimize the total time taken to complete the journey. This is an optimization problem. In particular, this is a minimization problem because you need to minimize the time taken. For this problem, among these four options, using a car might be the optimum solution. Let us understand a few general terminologies related to greedy algorithms. What is a feasible solution? Feasible solutions are all those valid solutions that satisfy a certain set of constraints. And what is an optimum solution? An optimum solution is a feasible solution such that it gives us the best result. In the example that we have already seen, walking or using a cycle or using a bike or using a car, all these are feasible solutions. But using a car would be our optimum solution. Note that the optimum solution is always a feasible solution. We cannot have an optimum solution which is not at all a feasible solution. Next, we will try to understand how greedy approaches can be used to solve an optimization problem and what exactly are greedy approaches. So what we can do is, there might be one particular problem. We can break it down into a series of small stages and for each stage, we will choose the best possible solution for that stage greedily. This is how greedy approaches help us to solve a particular problem. Like for this example, if we want to move from this point to this point, at every step, we look for the direction which gives us the steepest increase in height. After that, we'll take that move. Then again, we'll look for the steepest increase in height and we'll take that move. Slowly, slowly, we'll take our greedy moves and finally, we'll reach our optimum solution, which is the peak. So what greedy algorithm does is, Every time it will look at a very small sub-problem or a very small stage and it will try to solve this small stage greedily. And by taking such small small greedy steps, finally we are going to get to our optimum solution. A simple example for a problem which can be solved by using greedy approaches. Consider that you have been given an array which consists of some number of elements. And now you want to rearrange the digits in this array such that you can maximize the possible number. And what's the possible number? It's the number that is formed by just concatenating all the digits in the given order. Like if the array is 5, 2, 1, 3, 9, then the number we are going to consider is going to be 5, 2, 1, 3, 9, which is 52,139. So what we have to do is we have to rearrange the elements in this array such that the number that will be formed is maximized. What greedy approach can be used? What we can do is at every step, we can try to fill only one element, which is the element which is at the highest position. And what we can do is, we can try to fill this position by the largest possible number. For example, when we are trying to fill this particular position, we have to find the largest possible number. In this array, the largest possible number is going to be 9. After which we remove 9 from our array. Then for this position, we look again greedily which is the largest position, it will be 5. Then again we will remove 5 and then we are greedily we will check which is the largest number left. 
again it will be 3 then greedily we will check which is the largest number left which will be 2 and then 1 in this way we will get 9 5 3 2 1 so what we have done in every step we have greedily chosen the best possible value for that step and in that way we are hoping that the final result that we get is the best possible value and in this case it is indeed the best possible value knowingly or unknowingly we all have been using greedy algorithms throughout our life consider a simple day-to-day -day life problem consider you have many currency denominations of all these kind of notes that is 50 rupees 20 rupees 10 rupees 5 rupees and 2 rupees and 1 rupee and what you need to do is we have to use the minimum number of notes that is possible isn't this a problem that we have been solving throughout our life so how can we use the minimum number of notes what we generally do is we try to find the highest note that can be possibly used by us in this case for 30 rupees we can at max use a 10 rupee note so we'll use a 10 rupee note then we'll be left with 3 rupees then we'll again check which is the largest note that can be used we'll get to know that only 2 rupee note can be used so we'll then use a 2 rupee note and then we'll be left with only 1 rupee and then we'll check and find that only 1 rupee note could be used so we'll use a 1 rupee so indirectly we are just using 3 notes to get a sum of 13 rupees similarly if we need to find the number of notes required for 89 rupees we'll first check which is the largest value that can be used we get to know that it's 50 so we'll use a 50 rupee note after which we again check which is the largest value that can be used we are left with only 39 rupees to form and we get to know that 20 rupee can be used so we'll use a 20 rupee note then we'll be left with 19 rupees and we'll use a 10 rupee note after which we'll be left with 9 rupees and for 9 rupees what we'll do we'll use a 5 rupee note after which we'll be left with 4 rupees and in order to get 4 rupees what we can do we'll use 2 notes of 2 rupee so what we have done we have used minimum number of notes to represent the sum 89 this is also an example of greedy approach at every step we have chosen the largest possible note that can be used in order to create this sum so this is how generally greedy algorithms are used in order to solve problems but it's not always the case that the greedy algorithm that we have come up with in our first attempt is going to be right it might be the case that what intuitively looks correct might not be correct actually in this problem and also in the previous problem we have come up with a solution which is a greedy solution and we feel that our greedy solution is right but do we have any proof can we prove that our solution will always give an optimum solution so it's a very important part for us to learn how to prove whether an algorithm or whether a greedy algorithm in particular is correct or not because many at times a greedy algorithm feels to be correct but is actually incorrect so it's a very essential part for us to be able to prove or disprove whether a greedy algorithm that we have come up with is right or wrong and don't worry we are going to understand a few techniques and learn a few tips so that we can prove or disprove our greedy solution very quickly so in the next video we are going to learn an important technique which is used in order to prove greedy algorithms and that technique is called as exchange argument so let's continue our journey to understand greedy algorithms in the next video